Hey guys, this is Bobby Davis, the founder of Coder Foundry, and I'm in here in beautiful North Carolina weather today. It's it's a it's a little chilly, but it's kind of cool. I like it. Blue skies. I'm here with Kevin Doyle. He's still in lockdown. So uh say hello to the world, Kevin. How you doing? Hey, hey, Bobby. Hey, everybody. It's good. So I had to put my sweater on today, man. It's chilly out. I know. I got up and put a hoodie on today. And I was yeah. like, I put the hoodie up too. I was like, it's kind of chilly. For North Carolina, it's cold. Yeah, yeah, I know. I guess if you're from <laughs> Alaska, it? it's like, you know, plenty <laughs> <Yeah>. weather. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Shorts and t-shirt weather for sure. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So thanks everybody for joining us. That's awesome. We have a few people here. Yeah. Uh, Misha, David's here as well. Hey, David. David. How you doing? Uh, Giannis is here. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Thanks everybody. If you have questions about what we're talking about today, just pop them in the chat. Um, we'll, uh, get them answered if you want to come on today too that'd be awesome if you want to join yeah, us on camera on my live just dm twitter yeah dm uh coda foundry on twitter and we will get you on the show uh beth's here too hey beth uh rafinko's here mark's here michael everybody's here the whole gang's here the whole gang's here man <laughs> what's up rabbi um a little bit of a sad day for me today oh so um, I was supposed to go to San Diego today. Oh, no. It sucks. I was supposed to have an awesome weekend with friends in San Diego. And we're flying out there today, and it's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> it's not happening. Although they didn't cancel my fly. You get that? Okay. Which is kind of weird. Like, they would let me fly. Yeah. But there's nowhere open <laughs> when I get there. <laughs> so. And you weren't going to Comic-Con. You were just going to um, just San I was just going to fun. Go. Yeah. yeah, just to hit up the, the beach and the, the sights and sounds and smells of San Diego right. and get some awesome fish tacos. But Fish tacos. Yeah. Is that, is that where they're at? Is that where oh, it's amazing. At? Oh, this, the, the Southwest food in uh, San Diego is super good. Okay. The, the, the Mexican food, the burritos, the fish tacos, super good. All right. So uh, well, that's, we'll put that out there on today's channel. Like, tell us where the best taco is, people. Mm. You know? So... <laughs> If you if you're if you're so inclined to do that, you know, if you're living somewhere that has great tacos, <laughs> yeah, you know. we have a pretty good one here. Um, just that one downtown. Um, crafted, yeah, crafted. That's a good place. Yeah, and I like that place. That's a local shout chain. Shout out right? crafted. Hopefully they're watching. They're, <laughs> they're, uh, they're down their local place here. I doubt it, but you know, maybe he codes. Maybe the guy wants. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe he does. So. Maybe he does. So yeah, so that's my that's my downer for the day. But on the upside of that, my monitor came in. Okay. So I'm getting a new gaming rig. So my monitor came in yesterday. It comes in about a month before the rig comes in. So I'm stuck with right. this giant monitor for now without a PC stuck. attached to it. Stuck with it. Stuck with it. Stuck with it. Yeah. I hooked the Mac up to it. So it's cool. It's a big 34-inch one sitting behind this thing here. It's a yeah. big widescreen thing. It's cool. Yeah. So, you know. Swings and roundabouts, ups and downs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is interesting. No tacos in Switzerland. Thank God I have tacos in Switzerland, David. You're just not looking. <laughs> that's that's interesting. No tacos in Switzerland? Well, that's just off the list now. We just can't go. <laughs> you can't go now. Or maybe that's, that's an opportunity for someone to like make a taco joint. In, in maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. No, oh, here I, you go, Rafinko. Never had a taco either. What? Where do you wow. live, Rafinko? You've never had a taco? <laughs> wow. This could be life-changing for you. This could okay. be... Forget forget this coding thing. That's Yeah. Jump on the taco bandwagon. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Find a food truck somewhere. I don't know where Rafinko is yeah, at. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Slovakia. They don't have tacos either? I guess not. It must not be a very uh, European thing. Um, okay. So yeah. Oh, I, I do like this in though. England, you have friends in England. They have tacos yeah, there. They do, but just not. There's not many. It's not like it is here. But this is good. Suvlaki, love it. Super good. Love. Cake. Okay. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> technically a taco. I, I agree with you on that one, man. It's sort of is. Yeah. It's close. Yeah. So I, I agree yeah. with that. Good Slovakia is good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um. Okay. So, <laughs> on topic, what are we talking about today? <laughs> Uh, so we're going to talk about like if you've broken and you're a junior dev, mistakes I think that junior devs make on the job. So if you're out there today and you're in your first year. Um, yep. You may have done some of these things already. Yeah. So, <laughs> but they're correctable. 
But you're also, too, if you're looking for a job, we've got some hints in there, like things you don't do while you're still looking. Yep. So um, yeah. I just want to help you kind of like take your career forward. We're real like at Cutter Foundry and here in life, I just like to see people expand their opportunities. And I think you can expand them by doing some little personal tweaks and some things yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. So what we're not going to talk about is we're not going to talk overly technical things. No, we're not going to say about... like, no, we're not going to say like you make a mistake where you ordered your code right. the wrong way or you exactly. you deleted a database because right. you know, that happens too. <laughs> I've, I've been, been on those calls that. where someone deleted a database. <laughs> so it's your first weekend. You just don't touch the databases. Yeah. You'll be fine. <laughs> a friend of mine, um, I won't say his name, Michael, but uh <laughs> <laughs> I remember when he was early on, he, he sent me a, a panic message. He said, dude, um, um, is there a way to undo a SQL statement? You know? Uh-oh. And you knew what he'd done as I soon as he said done. that. And I said, yeah, just type this command in. And I told him to type in. I said, B-A-C-K-U-P. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh yeah, you gotta I, go didn't, to I, I didn't do that. <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's how you get it. You go to the backup and get it, pull it back. He deleted that's a bunch funny. of records because he didn't Did have he have record. a backup? No, this was at a bank. <laughs> so like uh, he had to go call someone. Oh, and they had wow. to pull back the database because he was a coding in production, which Junior shouldn't do. B didn't have a where clause in his delete statement. So it deleted everything. It's kind of funny. That's interesting. It works question there, from John. So oh, wow. OK, so they let him yeah. go. That's awesome. What's a rollback? <laughs> Oh, and SQL. <laughs> so like, yeah. So like, yeah. I'm he assuming the LOL means he knows what it is. He didn't have a, he didn't have a transaction around that statement either. So like he couldn't do rollback. So like, uh, you know, that's fun. It was just a straight up delete statement in, um, in enterprise manager. And when you type in delete, it'll delete it. Here's what yeah. I, here's, here's my only thing. This is all I know. I'm with you, Matt. If you can't control Z it, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Control Z doesn't work in <laughs> SQL. You can't get your data yeah. that way. Yeah, that that's a problem. <laughs> so I mean, there, no, the problem was put Adams on there. Um, this Adams said he didn't have a backup. It wasn't that he didn't have a backup. It's like when you work at a large shop like that, you have to go to the DBA or the network admin to get the backup done. So you have that's, to admit fault. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. It's not that you can't recover from it. It's that you usually have to call somebody, and they're gonna like yeah. You know, you can't just sweep it under the rug and just be like, no. I don't know why it was down for five minutes. I have no idea. <laughs> and you come in tomorrow and you're like, Hey, I can't log into the database. How come? I'm like, I don't know, man. When we don't know what happened to your login, <laughs> you know, so. that's funny. You better go see HR. I don't know if somebody was down here looking for you yesterday, yeah. but you no longer have SQL rights. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So, yes, yeah, so we're not going to talk about the overly technical stuff. No, we're, we're not. We're going to talk about more um, soft skill stuff. Yeah, soft skill. If you, if you want to call it that. Um, okay, so point number one, what's the first mistake we see a lot of? So I think what a lot of people do when they're coming out of a boot camp or they're coming out of school, they will label themselves as a junior developer. Right. And I don't think... Because you... Because you are, but and we've titled the vi this video "Avoid These Mistakes as Junior Developer" because this yeah. is like a common thing that people will call themselves. Yeah. But you're saying don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, you're just a developer. Yeah, you're just a coder at that point. I could, trust me, um, junior developer is only going to make you get paid less. Um, and so, like, basically, the what classifies you as a junior dev is probably your paycheck. <laughs> so like they're paying right. you less, but once you're on the job, they just kind of give you all the same things to do. Uh, so if you're on the on a team that's um, doing maintenance on a big software project, you got two senior devs and four junior devs. You're all fixing the same thing, working on the same thing. It's just the senior dev knows more about how it's architected, how it's put together. That helps you overcome problems. Um, but in general, you're paid less than that other guy is, but you're doing the same kind of things, the same kind of responsibilities. So if you delete the database at a bank, you can't go, well, I'm just a junior. It's a, it's okay. Right. <laughs> you're like, right. no, no, it's not okay. <laughs> you know, <but> like, <laughs> um, you know, so you're basically putting an artificial limitation on yourself yeah. just by adding that to your resume to LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And so the other thing that you see is like, you'll see junior dev on their LinkedIn profile. 
and they've been working somewhere for five years. And so what had happened was they just forgot to change it. Yeah. You know, and in that like, five years, what's happened? A recruiter said, now nah, I'm looking for a senior. I'm looking for a mid and yeah. you get the soft no, because they think you're, you're self classifying as junior. So like, you just need to like, put developer on there and then let them determine where you fit in their organization. Right. So, you know, a mid somewhere else, maybe a senior somewhere else, you know, you never know, you know? So like, and I've had some junior devs leave coder foundry, go to an organization. They're the only coder in the whole organization. Right. <laughs> right. So now you are the developer. You're senior. Because you're the yeah, only one. That's it. You're the, only <laughs> you're, one. You're, the, you're the guy. You're the IT guy. You know, so yep. like, uh, you know, that's that's the thing that. So don't don't artificially. I'm not saying you lie. I'm just saying you don't need to artificially classify yourself. And these aren't like like regulated classifications in this instance. Right. So you're putting junior on just doing it to yourself. I wouldn't do that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> this is just a funny comment. I'm going to put it up here. Brian's mom says hi. Hi, how you doing, Mom? Hey, hey Brian's, Brian's mom. mom. <laughs> how you doing? I don't, we, I don't know if we know Brian's mom. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. Thanks, Brian. That made me laugh. Yeah. Um, let's look here. We'll talk about some of the things you guys are talking about in chat here as we go yeah, along. Exactly. And I'll try and come back to some of those questions. Um, we'll are, answer the technical one. David Turner's got a question here. What's that one? So in SQL, in general... Okay, I'm sure there's some side cases here. Uh, if you're doing like a, a select statement, an insert statement, and then deleting some records, and you have like three or four statements, you can surround that with a transaction. Okay. Um, and you can do error checking if the update fails or whatever. You can like roll back the transaction. And so whatever happened inside that transactions will, um, it'll roll it back and it won't, those changes won't happen. So other transactions, exist outside of that so that doesn't affect any other transaction just the statements that you had inside your transaction so it's a sql um kind of paradigm that you can put together that oracle and sql server support probably postgres all the other guys do too all right so hopefully that answers that okay here you go adam's point here too his wife is director of imaging at her work she's also the only one in the imaging department but that part does not matter or doesn't go on her resume yeah of course she should yeah. put it on her resume yeah that's, that's how exactly. it works yep yeah if you're the guy you're the guy if you're the woman you're the woman you know like i'm that's it I, you know that's it so yeah so don't artificially limit yourself because you will forget to change it and you will have missed opportunities guaranteed on something right. like linkedin yeah, exactly. It's just we've seen it. We've seen yeah. graduates of Coda Foundry go out, and three years later, dudes working at Microsoft still says junior developer. Right. I'm like, you've reached the pinnacle of where you wanted to reach. Like, what right. do you, you just and he just never it's not that he thought of himself that way, he just never went back and changed it. Right. So this um, is a Kevin M question here. I'm gonna put this one up real quick. What's the difference between software dev and software engineer? I think there's I think overseas from outside the US, they they must make distinctions between this because we hear this a lot. And I didn't really know, like um, in the US, I'm just saying that those titles in general are interchangeable. Yep. So, but I'm sure there's a distinction to some people. Um, but like I said, these these titles aren't regulated in the US, so there's no like difference between the two titles in my opinion. Um, but I'm sure that engineer and dev and other parts of the world may have a, a distinct meaning. So if they mean something to you, let me know what they mean. So, but I don't think there's any difference between the two. Right. You know, so I don't think it okay. describes a specific role or anything like that. Let's get to our second point. Then. Okay. What's that? What's our second don't on this list? So inside of Coder Founder, we spend 12 weeks building a portfolio. And the reason we build these portfolios is because we want you to trade on your portfolio and not on your resume. So like if you're trying to change your position, um, you're a stack switcher or your education, traditional education doesn't line up what you think has happened in the industry. You need to have a really good portfolio to show people that you have invested a significant amount of time in learning how to code. And only did you learn how you've actually implemented on several projects. So that gives you a way better way to represent yourself and put yourself in the best possible light by showing them work you've built. So 
you know, especially if you're straight out of high school, man, and you've worked at, you know, like cookout or McDonald's or something like that, there's nothing wrong with that, but you're trying to break into a software engineer and that's your entire resume. Right. Um, they're just going to give you that soft no and just move on around the stack. But if you can get that portfolio in front of them, then they get off the resume and start looking at what you've done. And that's a, a true reflection of what you can actually do. Right. I think you've said this before. You're trading on your skills, not on your experience. Right, exactly. Because you don't have the experience. Right. So you need to trade on the skills. So that's your portfolio yep. versus your resume. Your resume just gets you in the door. You need to yeah. you, you need to use your portfolio as much as you can to, to do the rest. And the resume yeah. is more of a traditional thing, isn't it? It's, it's a traditional job search thing in the U.S. They call them CVs and overseas, you know. Um, yep. So in academia, they make sense. Um, in other jobs, sales jobs, they make sense. Um, because it's really hard to show that you drove, you know, a million dollars in sales last month for a company X. So you need a resume there, but for a programmer, developer, software engineer, software developer, if you can show complete working software projects, that's the best way to show your skills. Okay. Um, so I think that's what you need to do. And we spend a lot of time at Code Founder building these things. So that's the purpose of the whole class is to right. teach how to code in order to make a great sales tool. So show, whether if you've got a portfolio, show it to everybody you can. That's your that's your lead in. So when you apply for a job, you need to apply with, hey, take a look at my portfolio and attached is my resume. You know, right. <laughs> exactly. Like exactly. You know, and uh, the biggest thing on your <laughs> yeah, thank, you for, thank you for applying. You know. Yeah. And the biggest thing on your resume after your name, your portfolio link. You want the normal the next thing down to be your portfolio link too, so that yeah. it's like the first thing somebody's going to do is just click on that, so they can go that, take a look at your work. Right, because this it's a skill based industry, man. This is all built on skills. That's why there's still some companies out there now that says only will hire um, computer science graduates, and that's all they do. And it's like they're not even looking at what they can necessarily do. It's not that there's anything wrong with a computer science graduate. That's great, but that shouldn't be the only. It shouldn't be the most thing you're concerned with you're concerned with can they build something regardless right. of where they learned it i think the stats are like 60 to 70 percent of all programmers are self-taught yeah that's crazy isn't it yeah but it makes sense right and what i would say is if you've been doing this for more than five years a hundred percent of the people at that's been doing it for five years are self-taught because whatever you knew five years ago today it's different <laughs> and you had to teach yourself that Right. You know, you're not going back to college every other year or going back to another boot camp every other year. You're self teaching everything that you learn from this point forward. So a boot camp, a college or whatever is to get you into that door, that first job. And then it's up to you to manage your career going forward. You know, keep yourself learning. Always, always be learning, you know, as we say. <laughs> yeah. Which actually let's, let's jump to that step. Cause that's yeah. one of our things. That is one of our things. Yeah. Um, is is always be learning that is one yeah. of our tips um yeah. and always look at what's coming next yeah and i think that's called what i like to say a lot is uh commitment to craft and so like um your the craft of software development you should always learn new techniques new design patterns and then you also have an eye towards maybe new languages i don't think it should sacrifice your productivity today in other words like if you're making money coding c sharp and you want to learn react learn react build some stuff on the side but um don't let that sacrifice what people are paying you to do right. but you should always like learn something new you know see what's coming down the pipe keep learning never but stop. also be careful with that too yeah <laughs> don't yeah. try and learn everything no you don't know <laughs> that rabbit hole can get super super deep um mm -hmm. and, and i think we say that is people everything. learning to code or trying to learn everything at once. You know, like we right. saw that guy several weeks ago. He's like, I, yeah. I looked at nine languages. Nine languages week. last week. <laughs> Many. You know, um, and so like, you know, someone will ask us about, I think there was a question early on here, like, what do I think about Golang? And like, I haven't, that's not in my wheelhouse right now. That's not what I'm chasing down. Right. There is so much stuff in this industry that's so broad. You have to focus in on um, what you want to learn. So that's what I do. And I think that's what everyone else should do too. Fine. Yeah. I think it's interesting. Yeah. Here's Michael's take on this. All learning is self-taught. So you just give you directed learning. Yeah. Same way with the it's, boot camp. You get a teacher, a coach, or a mentor that helps you get over the, the points when you're, um, you know, stuck or yeah. whatever. 
I agree. You still have to put the work in. This isn't the Matrix. Work. This isn't the injection in the back of the head no. and learn Kung Fu. I wish it was, but <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. That would be that would be very cool. Wolfredo, we agree. Just keep learning. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. Um, here's okay. a question. In an interview where they're still using COBOL, how do you convince them to upgrade? You don't. That's not your job. And this is one of our steps, actually. It's one of our steps. <laughs> it's not your job. You know, um, you decide if you want to work there or not. That's your job to decide, make a decision. Um, now, once you work there, yeah, you can build rapport with people and you can have discussions about why they should move away from COBOL. Um, and then them staying on COBOL, there may be some absolute valid reasons for doing that. Most banks today still use COBOL. Um, they're interfacing with COBOL through um, like transaction management systems, QBA systems, um, things like that. But they're still using COBOL behind the scenes because there's just literally millions and millions of lines of code back there. So the rewrite may not be feasible, but putting a front end onto it, it's definitely feasible to do. Um, but it's not your job necessarily to convince them, especially during an interview. Like you're not, yeah, you're not there to not like, even in your first year. Yeah, surely. exactly. <laughs> So, you know, like during an interview, you, you, don't, you don't need to tell them all the things they're doing wrong. You know, like, you got to suck, man. I mean, like, you know, what happens when That's John gonna... kicks the bucket at 72? What are you going to do then? You're going to need a .NET thing. You, you don't do that. It's going to end um, badly. Yeah, it's going to end badly. So, I mean, you, you have to. Cobol is very kind of famous now because when all the unemployment happened, all these unemployment systems, and it was multiple states. It wasn't just New Jersey. Same thing happened in North Carolina. Like, these Cobol systems just. Like they just didn't work. And it sounds like those need to be rewritten. But I guarantee you that we'll get through this crisis and they'll stay the same. Right. The they states, will. The states aren't just, they're just not going to, they don't see it important. Well, because we know how software development works at that kind of level. It's it's hundreds and hundreds or millions of dollars yes. um, and projects that never get rolled out. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. And then there's, there's more to it than just the system. Usually there's like, 25 integration points that also yep. integrate to these other things. And so like, yep. um, there's just a lot to it. So. It's about changing their work environment too. Yep. A lot of times it's like their process has to change yep. along with the system. That's, and that's a big deal. So. And sometimes you have like um, cultural things where the dev manager knows COBOL, he's comfortable with it. So anything out of his wheelhouse, he's uncomfortable with. So him changing is not going to happen until that person leaves. So in an interview, that's a mistake, I think. And we'll talk a little bit about, more about that. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about our oh, – no, let me see here. What do we have here? Um, MSV says so many programming languages. Yeah. True. Too much. <laughs> too little time. So many languages. True. Adam agrees there's massive bureaucracy involved in changing a government system. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and massive yeah. amounts of money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you can get in on that gig, it's probably pretty profitable for the consulting company that's – changing those systems you know you're probably I'm sure it is fortune i'm sure i'm sure oh. okay let's talk about our step three um going sort of back a little bit yeah and it was um tip is to work with a recruiter yeah so we say this a lot we've been talking about a lot over three weeks is that working with recruiters is something that not only should you do i think you have to do it so you can apply directly to all these jobs but if you go to job boards and just look you'll see that most of them are postings from staffing agencies or recruiting agencies. And so the hidden, the hidden job market is that the recruiters actually hold the work, the order for finding the developer. And then the company itself isn't doing that directly. So like a lot of these jobs are only found through recruiters. And so at Coder Foundry, even though we're recruiters, we are, we have a recruiting agency behind us. Um, that we go out and actively search jobs. There's some jobs that we can't get into because another recruiting agency has that role. And so part of the search in here at Coder Foundry is Coder Foundry is uh, students and graduates are working with us. And they're also working with other staffing agencies as well because we want them to get a job. We would like to place them, but it's not wholly relying on us to do it because we realize that, you know, tech systems or somebody else may hold the, the hiring relationship. So you have to work with recruiters. Right. Build a, build a relationship with a recruiter and you'll, you'll, you'll be good. 
And that's in the U.S. market. So the other markets may work differently. But in the U.S. market, it's largely driven by recruiting in the tech industry. So there's been someone trying to hire me for a Xamarin project this week. <laughs> so like I've gotten like six messages from six different recruiting agencies all posting for the <laughs> same job. That's funny. And they keep sending me these things and they're like, hey, can you do this Xamarin project? You know, and I, you know, I can't because I'm, you know, I got, stuff, <laughs> I got other stuff to do. Yeah, got other stuff to do. <laughs> but it just proves that um that um I don't know what the company is, but like uh it just proves that these are held by re relationships yep definitely right, cool. and they have these automated processes too and we talked about this a bit where they'll just um they'll see this and they'll have applied for the job before you've even got your like your resume saved and printed or whatever you're going to do with it and they'll have a list of candidates right in front of these guys yeah. already and you have a really difficult yeah. time trying to get past that yeah so like so here's what happens so like there's a hiring manager out there and he needs a, a developer a .NET developer so he calls the recruiting agency he's worked with on the last 20 placements. In some cases, he will also go ahead and say, I'm going to make, I'm going to call my HR department and we're going to make an ND posting. They spend the thousand dollars they post on Indeed. You know, company ABC needs a .NET developer. The recruiter also has that and posts it out on Indeed as well. But before that job posting hits the market internally for HR, I guarantee you that recruiter um, already hit with like six to 10 resumes. Which one of these guys do you want? Yep. And, and sometimes it gets filled before you can even apply and you think you're applying to a job. It's already, really, gone. It's, already, it's already gone. So like if you're working with the recruiter already, then you're the one that's going to the top of that stack because the recruiter is repping you out there. I think that's good. Cool. Hey, we got someone on. Someone's in the green room. Cool. Yeah. We do. We'll come to that in one second. Okay, cool. uh, Eat all our snacks, digital snacks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adam says he has a second interview with tech. So yes, yeah, so Adam's cool. a graduate. And so like he's he's interviewing with Tech Systems, a large recruiting agency based out of Texas, but they're um they're um in every state. I think they're worldwide as well, but I know that they're national coverage and so um they have roles and and you know, there's some roles that we can't get to, but tech systems can. So we're, yep. we have a partnership, not necessarily a partnership, but we're working with tech systems to help our recruiter or help our, our applicants get jobs. So it's not all about me. It's not all about Code per se. It's about making sure that they get roles. So, yeah, definitely. Right. So we're going to get um, Alex Lee on here. Uh, who's, tech, tech who's, who's tech rallying in the chat. He's going to come on and he's going right. to give us. Um, so he has a perspective on um interviewing junior developers and how to approach an in-person coding challenge okay so let's see cool. what uh let me get you in you ready to go alex sweet, sweet. Hey, hey alex what's up hey. hey it's good to see you guys again yeah <laughs> thanks for coming on yeah i love loving these uh daily uh daily live uh, youtube chat uh youtube shows cool. <laughs> it's good awesome. it's a good lunch break <laughs> yeah exactly that's cool thanks for joining yeah. us thanks for coming yeah. on yeah yeah so um, what you got yeah, so I, I know a lot of you guys' advice is revolved around telling a story and talking about your projects and kind of always like leaning it back to the project. Yeah. Um, but I do, there are companies that eventually go like, all right, great, good job. All right, let's try this coding challenge together, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that is, those are going, those situations are going to happen maybe. I mean, actually, every company I interviewed at before, like they would always come up with some kind of live coding challenge. And mm -hmm. I, we, at my company, we do the same thing as well. Um, but when I talk to, when I work with junior developers on that specific situation of the coding challenge, it's not necessarily like, Hey, I want you to solve this and not talk about it. Right. It's kind of more of like a conversation, like when you're writing your code, explain why you're doing it this way or explain why you're doing it that way. I find that when I'm interviewing, I would like to have some kind of like interaction or some kind of, um, report, report, report uh, some kind of rapport with. The actual junior developer or the person interviewing so mm -hmm. i know what they're thinking and things like that yeah so you're when you guys do it at your company are you guys using whiteboards to do that or are they coding on the ide or how do you guys do it yeah so for mike uh it depends on the level that we're uh of the d developer that we're interviewing but for generally for junior developers i actually have my laptop in front of me and then we have a screen and uh we have a shared screen and they're basically coaching me to write out the project. So we have this little like 
like we have this little like React or whatever project that they want to work uh, that they're comfortable with, and mm -hmm. then essentially like we build a little app together, and they kind of coach me on like what they're thinking, and I just write out the code. But if it's like a senior level developer, then I more or less just give them the computer and just tell like, all right, a uh, lot more ambiguous and just be like, hey, just solve this out right here. This is okay. the prompt. So, so you, you're looking for more about the way that they're thinking through the problem, right? That's what you're trying to get to. Right. And to, to like your point about junior developers and like hiring junior developers, I think a lot more times than not, it's the employers just trying to find a good fit and someone that's really like eager, knows about the company, Mm -hmm. Kind of, kind of knows how to code, right? Like three months of coding, and right. is it someone that we can groom to become a main contributor to our team? Right. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think um, yeah. that's exactly right. Now we we do talk about like um, like getting ready for whiteboard interviews or getting ready for right. challenges. Um, one of the things that I've seen though is like if you can walk in there, people will have a whiteboard challenge, but when you walk in there and you show them something, they'll end up talking about that. It's just human nature. So as programmers, right. when we're interviewing people, we're actually naturally inquisitive people. And so like, if I can just get you to look at that and then I walk you through that, it's, it's sometimes it can help. Now, not every company that we work with, they, some of them have their own process. Like we were the company that has like a personality profile is above all the personality profile yeah. is before whether you know c sharp dot net or whatever and right. if you pass the personality profile you can't even interview and so like i realize that like some of them have this like very distinct process you know and lean like right. there's a company here in winston and i think they're proud of it i'll just call them out a company called inmar which is a very large company and to work there as a dev you have to give a, a powerpoint presentation about like why you want to be there it's just like I don't How know. daunting yeah. is that? <laughs> it's so crazy. Right. I, I mean, that might <laughs> be a little. That's terrible. Yeah, that might be a little extreme level. I was just more yeah. like, oh, you know what our company does. Oh, that's, yeah, exactly. that's good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So for some people giving a presentation could be the last thing they ever want to do. They never ever want to do that in their entire life. That's not on their most, list of. Most of us programmers are introverts. We're not. We're right. not right. selling the product, man. We just want to code it. You know, like uh, so, like it's kind of funny. Like so. Right. But as a junior developer, like if you're trying to just get into the space, you kind of yeah. have to play the game a little bit. So you even do. if you are introverted, you kind of have to just be more, uh, be more like extroverted when you're like explaining your code and things like that. Right. It's um, it's kind of playing the game, unfortunately, when yeah. you don't have really much weapons on your side. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what you need is a job. You don't. Um, so you have right. to do whatever they're asking, even if you think that. And I think whiteboard. Um, questions in general are unfair. I don't like them. Like when I interview yeah. devs, I do very similar to what you do, but typically what I'll do is give them a laptop and we have an MVC project that right. has, and I'll tell them that like, here's four bugs in this project and I'll detail the bugs, fix these, and then um, you can use whatever you want. You can Google, you can do whatever you want to do and then um, get back to me in an hour, <laughs> you know, and then they, and they can either make it work or they can't. And for um, senior devs, um, we do the same thing, but it's a little bit more. Um, right. But you know what, though? What's funny for me, though, I'm a little bit different. Like now, my junior devs that have worked at uh, Cortex in the past three years have all came out of Coder Founder. So I actually have like this three month, like, where you I know, to it's a three month interview. <laughs> it's a three month interview. Like when I start interviewing uh, specific students, they all know that oh he's going to hire somebody out of the class and like um so we right. um, we inter interview people so um that's what i do so if you're out there and you're coming to the school and i step in and want to interview situations no pressure <laughs> i mean that's a good that's a great point too though right it's all yeah. about i mean as 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 much as it is focused on the technicals of learning how to code it's also yeah. how who do you know and how you build those relationships through yeah. like meetups and uh yeah. just other forms that exist in the internet right now so yeah i would definitely think like if you can go to a, a javascript or you know whatever your skill set is meetups those are right. good things to do because right. sometimes a dev manager will show up at these things you never know yep. who you're going to meet at these things so right so cool. right exactly and like um at my company we have a couple of coding bootcamp graduates from the same school so generally when we do interview and we get we hear um, about prospects from that school, we we might have a little bias towards them because yeah. we're familiar with what yeah. they know, and um, yeah, just it's it's a lot easier to interview knowing that 
what kind of uh, system they they went they, they went through. Yeah. yeah. And I've I've been so I run a consulting company and the boot camp. So I've been on jobs where it was so funny. Like I was interviewing to get a technical job at this place, and I walked in the room, and they had eight developers working there. And six of them came from Coder Foundry. And the guy didn't know it. He didn't know that that's where they came from. He just said, how do you know all these people? I'm like, oh, they went to my school. And then he's like, <laughs> and they're all, Bobby, what's up, man? How you doing? You know? <laughs> so it was kind of funny. So that's like, funny. We got the job because of that pretty much. So it is about what you know and the relationships you build. Right. It helps a lot. So cool. definitely. Well, that's awesome. Thanks for your perspective, yeah. Alex. We really appreciate it. Yeah, of thanks. course, um, all the time. Yeah. You want to you plug your channel? Yeah, plug it. <laughs> uh yeah, it's just that that's it's it's right on my name. It's Tech Rally. It's on my YouTube channel. So there you go. Yeah, Tech Rally. If anybody hasn't been there, go check it out. Go sub Tech awesome. Rally. I watched yeah. I watched uh the one about um the uh, basketball players last night. Just oh like, yeah, I'm a yeah, huge NBA uh, fan. That was interesting. I mean, it's one of those things where as a, I'm a software developer by right. trait, but trying out different things, it really reminds me of like learning how to code again from scratch. Right. Where I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but you you just gotta try. I think sometimes people are too focused on like, oh, I need to know what the best software to co uh, video edit is. Like similar to like, I need to know what the best language to code in. It's not that as important as you think it is. You just gotta yep. uh, try, fail, and keep going and keep going. Keep so, doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's still a lot of. I see a lot of similarities with uh, all this video editing that I'm doing now to like when I first started learning how to code. It's just. The same attitude, same mindset, and you know you'll get things done. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, yeah. Alex. Awesome. It's good seeing you, man. Thanks, Alex. Right. Thanks for having me on. I'll see you later. No Bye. Cool. Super cool. Cool. Um, Ad hoc, man. He just like DM'd you up. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Let's. Um, and if anybody else wants to come on, feel free. If you have a channel to plug, that's cool too. Um, yeah, definitely. Let's see. Uh, just one quick thing here. MSV drinking mango lassi. So you ever had mango lassi? No, is man mango is a fruit though. I don't know what last mango. Is. Mango is a fruit. It's like a. I think it's milk based, but okay. it's 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 an Indian like drink. It's super good. So is that like the? Uh, I've, there's a company here that has kung fu milk. It's like green tea and milk and tapioca. Mm, no, it's not quite that. I don't okay. know what it's actually made with. I think it's more of a milk based uh, mango drink, but it's super good. Okay. It's, it's really good. If you ever go to uh, the place in Winston, the Indian restaurant place there, they have it. You should definitely okay. get it. Hundred percent. Since they open back up. Yeah, when they open back up. Yeah. 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 Um, here's a good question for you. What do you think about freelancing right out of the gate? Yeah, I think, um, Lewis, a lot of people are afraid of freelancing, and I don't think you should be. Um, and I'm going to put freelancing and contracting in the same kind of realm. Freelancing typically is when you found a your own customer and then they pay you directly. Contracting, you may go through a recruiting firm and you may work a three to six month contract. Um, I think taking a contract is really good out of the gate and because you can get paid while you're still looking for that, um, that W2 or that full-time role. Um, I contracted for years and it's, it's way, once you get good at being a contractor, um, it's really hard not to be employed in contracting. Cause like you can, um, you just jump from place to place to place. And you also build out this diverse knowledge base of how different systems work. Um, so as we were joking the other day, Kevin, I know a lot about how donuts are made. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because you got to go to Krispy Kreme. I got to go to Krispy like you had that Kreme. Different, yeah. different business perspective. And like, for example, um, and I was writing like an, a system that managed parts. And you may not know this, but every Krispy Kreme, and that may be the truth now, but at the time when I was there, Every donut machine was custom made for each location. And so they really? machined the parts right there and made it. So it's like this very kind of like crazy contraption that made donuts, but they would make it fit for wherever the retail location was. So they had different size requirements is different thing now. And so they would build these machines, put it on a pallet, ship it to the store, and then they would construct it in the store. But you had to keep up with all the metal and all the parts and stuff like that. Wow, that's interesting. It was pretty interesting. Now, are they more standardized now? They may be. I hope so. But like, get the I don't time. know. I've been to a couple of those places, and no, they do yeah. seem very unique. They're all unique. You yeah. Know, and, you can, and I think that's part of the mystique about it. You can walk through there, and you can watch the donut come through the machine and that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, so that's yep. kind of what I was working on there. So I learned about like the manufacturing process and then like how 
you know, the dough and the glaze and all that kind of stuff. They basically ship the store on a pallet and then they put it together. Hmm. Interesting. Right, there you go. So it's milk, mango, and sugar. Yeah. That's probably why I like it. Sugar. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Kung Fu tea <laughs> is like milk, sugar, and green tea. Okay. Interesting. I've never had that before. That's what the place okay. is called in, in, in Winston or Greensboro. Okay. Maybe I need to try that. So uh, the Lions playlist, thank you for the question. Um, how do I know that I'm already past being a junior dev if there's no dev hierarchy in my company? If one of two devs in a non-software development department, uh, I develop internal web apps. So A, what, I'm, what we're saying is you're not a junior dev, you're just a developer. So get that out of your head and then figure out what you're worth in the open market. So... If you've been there longer than a year building internal web apps, you're no longer a junior, I don't think. Yep. Now, if you've been working for a year or two years and you go to Microsoft, they may they may classify you as junior, you know, but, um, you know, basically you need to less worry about titles, worry about what you're working on and um, how much they're paying you. Right. So don't let, just don't. You know, it's like it's like would we would we ever like take actresses and actors and call them junior actors and then they're you know <laughs> the first role in Guardians of the Galaxy and we're like yeah right he's a yeah, junior, just a actor, junior. <laughs> like, you know I know the movie made a billion dollars but uh, you know it's his first role you know right no nah, it's not that way so like right. uh, I think um, just don't look at titles and look at what you do you yeah trade Definitely. on your skill and experience yep. This is interesting. Massive Chris from use AR to make donuts even better. <laughs> I'm thinking AR the sugar though. I don't, know. I don't think they can. <laughs> They're probably working on it already. Yeah. Um, let me see here. What was I going to put up here? Adam Tech says 60 to 7% of the roles they fill are contracts. Yep. 20% contract to hire mm -hmm. and only 10% are full time positions. Yeah. So what's contract to hire? Explain contract that. to hire means that you'll work 90 days and then they'll convert you to a full time role at, at the company. So it's like a trial. It's a, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, a 90 day per But you're paid. Version. But you're paid. You're paid. You're paid by tech yep. systems in this role. Yep. And, yep. and then they, they can typically convert without a fee, is what the contract hires for. It's for the uh, recruiting agency and the employer, not necessarily. It, just, it doesn't matter about you as the contractor that um, they'll convert you without a fee after a certain period of time 90 days or 500 hours or 1,000 hours, whatever the, uh, the role is. And so like you just work on a contract and you can just with tech systems, man, they have contracts coming up every day. So you can just stay employed and work in contracts, go contract to contract. Right. You learn a lot of things that way. It's not a bad way to do it. But I do understand that sometimes you want a 401k, you want better benefits. Um, as a contractor, sometimes at tech, you may not have the best benefits, though I don't exactly know what they are. Um, yeah. But you can but also, they do have some benefits. Right? Oh, yeah, they have to. As, and as, stuff. A, as, a, as an employee, you'll have to get them. Okay, which which for those outside of the U.S. maybe don't understand how important that is here with the way yeah. the healthcare system works here. It's like it's you need medical benefits. <laughs> yeah, and so sometimes you can like do that on your own and those kind of things. So, um, yep. Jason, I don't know what's going on with your messages. I don't, this is the first one I've seen from you. So thanks, thanks for joining us, but I don't know if the, <laughs> that's a YouTube thing. I don't know. Yeah. If you have a question, though, try it again. I don't, I don't see it being blocked anywhere. So. He's here early, though, at least. He's not here at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Jason showed Oh, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> I forgot Jason showed a couple of days ago, 30 seconds before we went out. leave it cool. <laughs> right now. So <laughs> that is fine. I forgot yeah. about that. <laughs> um, Rafinka, what's the difference between junior dev for 50K and junior dev for 70K? 20K, of course. Exactly. That's what I'm Yeah, not, I mean, that is the difference, right? That's the difference, man. You know, call me what you want. Just pay me more. You know, um, but um, if you if you kind of get rid of those titles, you're just negotiating your salaries. And what we want out of this, out of Coder Foundry and for everyone listening is look at yourself as this like very independent person that and you don't have to be like total gun for hire but you can manage your career so that um you can benefit the most out of this so if you're working for a place and you feel like you're trapped and you're a coder that's that's you thinking you're trapped you're really not you someone else will pay you what you're worth you know but um you do need to get that one year experience first so take what you can get get experience and then manage it up from there and we call that the road to 100k Definitely. Like hey, tech yo, has some, 
Yeah. Okay, we'll do that one next. Jason, yeah. uh, John, he has some experience with tech. He said that he was converted after six months working for them. So yeah, exactly. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Alex says rather be a hundred k junior developer than seventy k senior developer. Yeah. And that just depends on where you're at, you know. <laughs> like you know, like uh, so like, um, so don't worry about the title. Worry about the paycheck. That's why I yep. look at it. You know. Yep. Yep. Hey, Jason says uh, we're here early <laughs> or <laughs> or on time. Jason, I don't know. I don't know if it's. <laughs> uh, so thank you. Thanks for watching. We appreciate Thanks, it. Um, Thanks. definitely. So. Um, Perby says the comments get ignored. I'm trying not trying to ignore you. I promise. I don't yeah. know if I haven't seen something, it goes kind of quick sometimes. It does go. There's a lot. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot. So of I really, I'm really not trying to ignore it. But if you have a question, I'm definitely going to put it up. Uh, or I'm going to try to. I should say. <laughs> I'm not going to guarantee anything. Um, let's talk about uh, uh, one one of our other steps here. Um, grumpy coder guy, grumpy yeah. coder person, whatever you want to call him. Right. And um, I, I think we call him grumpy coder guy. Um, and that just comes from my personal experience when, I, when I've worked in dev shops. And a lot of times the grumpy coder guy is, um, yeah. And so like uh, the grumpy coder guy is someone that's very um, self-consumed. They're not, <laughs> okay. they're not, they don't share well yeah with they're, a, they're a hoarder not a sharer yeah and so like you know you go over to crumpy gutter guy and you say hey um i was trying to fix this do you have an idea how this how this worked it looks like you made the last commit here and they won't help you they'll right. yell at you for asking you should figure that out you know like and so they're very kind of like um they they don't play well with others um they kind of push people down and they're okay. not very, um, they don't work well with others. And I don't think that's the great way to be. So there are a lot of people out there that are brilliantly smart or wicked smart about what they do. And they let everyone know it. You know, and so it's literally like you get to the point to where we're the grumpy coder guy. You just want to slide pizza under the door and just fix it and just don't talk to people, <laughs> you know. And so I think that limits your career. You're only as good as your single-handedly whatever your abilities are and what you can do is become a different type of person yeah what's the opposite of grumpy coder guy yeah so i think they share information number one they're not knowledge um what i call gatekeepers or kingdom builders they'll tell you how everything works they're very um they can share their time well you know a lot of times you do have stuff to get done but like you're not like you say hey i'll get with you later today i've got i'm on a deadline um, there's that's the type of conversations they have and they're very uh, generous with their time and their knowledge and they share knowledge. The second thing they do is they don't go to war with other departments. Grumpy Coder guy is at war with sales. He's at war with marketing. He's at war with the leadership, the president, the guy that hired him. He's always at war. And yeah. then um, the other person will talk to sales and go, OK, how can we make the software better so you can sell more? And that's the conversation you should have. Even if that sales guy is overbearing, the rock star coder is like looking at how do I move this forward with the company? How do I contribute? And even at right. a junior level, um, you can be that person that is more like a servant type attitude versus like this whole like, while I say you should get paid as much as you can, but while you're doing the job, I think you should contribute as much value as you can um, with what you've agreed to do. So I think that's, that's the thing is work well with others, build relationships, build bridges, not burn them. Um, you know, don't tell the sales guy to just go sell more. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, right. And he's got like, he's got his problems and you've got your issues, but empathize with his issues. It's like, if we could just make this product better, um, empathize with the company and try to add value. I think that's the difference it is. I think also Grumpy Coder Guy will ultimately shoot himself in the foot. The oh, yeah. company will ultimately realize that that behavior is toxic to the company, to the brand. Yeah. It just then it's not going to fly, right. even if it is your best employee. And I think right. this is something that Gary Vee's touched on too. Yeah. He basically says if your best employee is somebody who you don't feel is approachable and don't feel like he's going to answer questions, that's not your best employee. You yeah, need to get rid of them. them. Get rid of them. <laughs> And so like, um, that's what I feel like you need to be one that kind of contributes to the overall success of the organization. Um, and then, um, and then help your others empathize with what others plights are. And I think that's just being, and I call it like Mark Cuban said, the new superpower is being nice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes we're just not nice to people because we feel like 
my knowledge is better than yours and therefore you're stupid and I'm not going to communicate with you. And what happens is eventually you get phased out because you're not, you can't work with well with others. Yep. Yeah. So yep. I think that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Let's answer some questions here. OG Jake. Thanks for the question. If I'm in college looking for a remote internship this summer, which last summer you'd have been like, wow, you're never going to get a remote internship yeah. this summer. Maybe you are. <laughs> Um, where do you recommend I look? I don't know. I'd, I'd have to know more about OG, what you're doing. Like, um, like what are your skills and things like that? And then just see. Location matters too, right? Yeah, location matters. Even um, though it is remote, it's probably going to matter. <laughs> and so like, I'm assuming you're talking about a coding internship. I don't know if I would do a, make sure it's paid though, man. Um, so, and make sure you're coding. So, yep. Yep. I don't think you should code for free unless you're building it for yourself. My, my life is if I code for free, I'm coding for me, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm building my own thing or I'm helping someone that really, really needs my help. But like a comp, you know, you know, combo corporation, ABC doesn't need free coding help. They can afford to pay you. So. Right. Here you go. He says he's learning C++ right now, learning free. Yeah. On your free time. Absolutely. That's what you should do. Like if you're in college, they're probably going to teach you um, something like C++, like an object oriented language. And typically, I don't know what college you're going to, but typically they're not going to teach you things like full on web development or front stack or full stack web development. But that's something you can learn on your own so that you can, when you leave college, you can roll into jobs. That's where the jobs are right now today. That's cool. Cool. Okay, yeah. Laporta, thanks for the question. So when should someone give up trying to be a coder for a career? Been trying with Python since 2017, stuck in tutorial purgatory. Build a project, man. Um, Laporta, start, build a project in Python. So what we say is the language you're learning, Python, should lead to a specific solution. So ask yourself the question, what am I trying to build? So tutorials typically don't lead to building something that that can be used. And so like if Python doesn't lend itself to like learning of building something that you can use, pick a different stack or something like that, maybe a full stack like .NET and ASP or full stack React or Angular or something like that. Um, what are you trying to do with Python? Are you, are you trying to go to data science? And so what are those, what are those applications that you need to know how to do to get into that industry? And so, and build those. So that's, you need to like get out of tutorials. If you've been looking at tutorials for two years, then you should be able to build a project at this point of some sort. Try to do it and then apply those tutorials to that project. Don't give up though. Keep trying. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. Didi has an interview later with Natasha. Yeah, I talked about this morning. Cool. That's cool. He's yeah. going to reply and what your tips. Uh, going to reply what I learned on your tips on how to handle interview my application interview with Coda Foundry. I hope it works. Now, Natasha's not going to give you a technical interview. No. Um, she's going to ask you about you. You. So yeah. this is pretty. This is a candidate for Coda Foundry. Yeah. Yeah. This is a softball interview. She's going to yeah. ask you um, more soft skill stuff, what you've done in the past, what you've done to learn to code, that kind of stuff. Right. She's not going to ask you technical questions. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, let's look here. All right. So we got some other ones. Um, don't be great. Um, we do. Yeah. Give us another tip. So what I, what I want to do is like, I'm mimicking my career and the thing that I do. And so like a lot of you guys, when you're looking out for jobs, you're looking for the perfect job. And what we talked about the other day is don't find the perfect job, find the perfect career. And that career can be a collection of jobs. And so like you may find a place that you're really comfortable in and that's great. And that may be your first job or your fifth, fifth job. And you may land somewhere that you want to stay for a while. But like um, moving around is also not a bad thing to do to where you can learn about how different systems work. You know, I've worked in from manufacturing to insurance to donut making, you know, like I've done it all. And then I started a consulting company in 02. And so like all of those experience rolled that up into that. To the, when I walk into a company now, you know, I've seen how certain manufacturing things have worked. I've seen how insurance is put together. I've seen how, like how food products are done. And so I can understand like how this works. I even worked at on a contract at a company that did um, cleaning materials. So like even the, how all that works, like, you know, for Ecolab. So like um, Ecolab being like 
one of the largest cleaning providers for all the quick service restaurants, you know? So like, how about so that, that busy? Huh? Yeah. They're busy. That busy? Yeah, so like, you know, the hand soap and how those cleaning procedures worked and how the health department inspections work. So all of those things lead me to be like, you know, understanding how different systems work and the more systems you understand the the better programmer you're going to be. And um, I think that's led to the point to where now I can imagine how different products should work because I've seen, you know, I've seen a lot of things in my career. Right. And the only way you can do that is work at different places. So yep. consulting companies are good because you get to see different domains. That's kind yeah, of you get to work in those different business verticals, don't yeah, you? Exactly. Which you? Like cross, like uh, cross knowledge. Yeah. Here you go. Um, Talal, what should I do? Thank you for the question. What should I do in my studying time in college to guarantee a job as a software engineer after graduating? So look at that picture there. You look like seven years old. In that picture, <laughs> it has to be. It's either a picture of you when you were young or it's your son. One exactly. of the two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you're in college at seven, like uh, I, don't, I don't think you're going to have any problems. He's an overachiever. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. What it is. <laughs> but seriously, um, I think that if you have a portfolio walking out of there, you can help you um, interview better. And so you need project-based work that you can show in a potential employer. Um, and then be on the hunt for a job too. That means that you need to apply, work with recruiters. You need to take ownership of, of your um, job hunt and just keep interviewing until you get a yes. But shop your portfolio. Don't trade on your resume. And so your resume may be work plus college, if you have work plus college plus portfolio, that's the best thing you can do. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Oh, David's got to go on. Stuck on this question. Uh, how would you explain APIs to non-technical stakeholders? I did this the other day. <laughs> okay, awesome. How did you do so it? Like, so like I was um, a friend of mine. Uh, it's actually a family member. Um, works at a large fortune 100 company i don't i don't want to call them out but like uh they uh i was asking him so what are the apis to this um stuff and he goes what's that what do you mean api what do you mean by that and sometimes as developers sometimes we we talk in three-letter acronyms yeah and so i said well you know apis application program interface that's that's what it means um but uh, it allows basically what i tell them is like you know how when you go to a website and you click a button and it does something. An API is something typically you can call that does something. So in your case, and I took his case of like what he was talking about, yeah, um, virtualizing network racks. In your case, when I call this API, I can read all of the jacks on that, that on that device, and and look at like if it's plugged in, is it on or it's off. And so the, typically, what I do is take the abstract, David apply it concretely to the stakeholder. So the non-technical stakeholder has a, an expertise in a domain. And then I describe how an API would fix his problem in his domain. Plus you made it applicable to his thing too. Him, you put exactly something him. that he understood right. and applied the model to something he understood. Right. Exactly. So like, so let's say that um, for you, and I know you knew some, you knew stuff about cameras and you're, you work at red but like, you know, like, so we're going to build an API for a red camera, for example. And you're like, well, what's an API? What do you mean by that? I'm like, well, you know, like, what if we could call a method that could go to the camera and pull off the last footage off of it and then, you know, compile that and stick it in a Premiere timeline. And all I had to do was connect that to a network cable. Okay. Yeah. And an API that does that. And you're like, oh, yeah. okay, I see how that'd be useful. That'd be kind of cool. Well, that way, while I'm filming, it could automatically be creating a timeline in Premiere for me while I'm filming with a rough cut. Yeah. Does this, does this exist? Because this is cool. I kind of like this idea. <laughs> uh, probably not. <laughs> so like, yeah, like, uh, we've got it cool, though. So, but I get it. Yeah. you got to yeah. put it into the, to, to, into, the person's, um, yeah. uh, into the person's space. So the software has to connect to the hardware. And in between those two things is an API, some kind of application over here that talks to this piece of hardware, this other device over here. In between those things is an API um, that allows those two things to communicate. Typically, we see those in like web services, but, you know, you could have it in a, you know, down low level too. Yep. Derek said, that's literally what I told people at my job. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm just going to use talking about this, but then look, 
um, Nightbot like got after him after this because it's like he's like spamming caps. You're on the bad list, man. Like, it's, it's, he's, now he's apologizing to Nightbot. Look, I think it got you the other day too, Derek. That's funny. You're going to be like, you're going to get timed out here in a minute. I can't control it. It Nightbot does what it does. Crazy, man. It's, it crazy. does what it does. And I'm just, I'm just, just it is. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right. Well, cool. Well, um, I think that's it. So, um, again, the final thing I'll leave you with the final thing is focus on in your first years, focus on productivity. So like, um, it's real easy to, um, get distracted and, um, but focus on squashing as many bugs, deliver as much value as you can focus on productivity, productivity, which means sometimes you don't have enough information. You need to be brave enough to ask questions to senior devs, even if they bite your head off, if you have grumpy coder guy in the organization to get enough information for you to focus on productivity. And then when you're asking questions, sometimes you feel like you're stupid, but like you're not. I'm um, asking questions is the primary reason how you can get things done and clarification asking things is per perfectly appropriate. Some junior devs will sit there because they don't want to be dumb and they won't ask any questions. And then three weeks passes and they haven't done anything. Right. And that gets you fired because you didn't focus on being productive. And you need to. Yeah. You want to be known as the guy who gets it done. Yes. That's your goal in the first right. year, right? You want everybody to be like, yeah, that guy, give it to that guy. He can, he'll turn it out in a week. Right. You know, and then so, like, if you get the, the crap jobs at the low level, that's fine, man. Just squash all those bugs, do all that maintenance, work on the old parts of the system, you know, like, you know, and then just be productive. Whatever they're asking you to do, be productive. Yep. Um, so anyway, I hope that helped you guys. I hope that helps out a lot. So yeah. Um, Anybody else? Anyone for the road? Let me see. Um, let me see. What do we got? Sorry if I didn't get all the questions. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I try. I really try. I promise. Yeah. Um, here you go. I like Talal. We've had one Talal, but I like this question. Would consistent GitHub contributions impress HR? It's not going to impress HR. <laughs> HR probably doesn't even know what that is. Dev manager, maybe. Uh, like, uh, so that's that's kind of a that's kind of loosely like something you're doing, and it's kind of cool. What's better if if they go to your actual GitHub repo and then you have a full project in it? That's going to be more impressive. But um, you know, forking something, making contributions to an open source project, those are cool. Um, they're not super, super, super visible, like a published website that someone can go to, um, you know, so, you know, it's but, not, but a it's dev not. manager will probably check your GitHub, right? Maybe. He'll at least see, maybe not dig in, but at least look if there's something on it. Yeah. And is he going to go see how many contrib contributions you have? I don't know. I mean, like maybe it's like a stat. It's like your stack overflow rating. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, but yeah. like he, but if you give him a working piece of software and a website, he probably will click through that. That's that's what I'm saying is make it easy for them to explore what you can do and don't hide it in like GitHub contributions and like you know, right? You know, Stack Overflow rating, that kind of stuff. I mean, those are yep. cool. Those are side things. It shouldn't be the main thing, right? Yeah. Awesome. One last thing before we go. Um, Laporta D is looking to build a top-down shooter. That's awesome. Um, they were just discussing this in chat, so that's cool. If you do that, send it to us. I want to play. Yeah, exactly. We'll play it, man. <laughs> I've got a sweet gaming rig on the way. I want to yeah, go head to head. <laughs> I play your game. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's that's pretty that's funny. Kind of cool. I don't know. Um, build box. I'm not familiar with. I've done Unity, um, so I'm going to be biased. I would pick Unity. If you ask me right now, I'd have to look into what Build Box gives you. Um, so, but there's a lot of support, a lot of, uh, tutorials out there for unity. I wouldn't know about Billbox. So, yep. but, um, yep. I'm going to put this thing up here last Joshua. I didn't see any previous question from you, Joshua, but, um, the answer is sort of yes. I'll tell you why. Cause the chat goes kind of quick and yeah. we want to keep sort of on topic. So if you have a question you really want to get answered, you can put it in multiple times and I may see it again later on. Um, so if you come back again, yeah, I'm at Coder Founder too. You hit me up on Twitter, and then yeah, uh, if you hit me up on Twitter and you want to come on and ask it, I will definitely get you on and ask. Yeah, exactly. Question. <laughs> so, so yeah, cool. 
So yes, thanks for everybody for hanging out with us today. Thanks we uh, definitely appreciate. It. We have a couple of things uh, at the end here. If it is your first time here, um, you can go to codefinder.com slash job roadmap and you can get on our mailing list. Yeah. And you can learn the five steps to getting in, which maybe we'll do a video on actually too. Yeah, we will. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll yeah, maybe we'll actually and do the whole five steps. Coming out that that talks about that that we may have an announcement. Oh, maybe, maybe exactly. we'll do an exclusive announcement here at yeah, some point. That'll exactly, be we'll cool. break some news. That's something I'm working on. Yeah, not saying exactly. the end of next month is a big month, but it's, it's it big. Might be. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's cool. Um, if you want to look at um, coming to Code Foundry, the bootcamp, we're 12 week uh, .NET bootcamp. We do have a virtual offering. So you can go to codefoundry.com slash virtual and you can find all the details there. I don't know if some of you guys are already in the mix for that too. So that's super awesome. And you have an interviews and all that kind of good stuff. Speaking with uh, Natasha and Haley, probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, uh, good luck. And as I say, just keep coding. We will see you. Is we won't see you tomorrow, will we, Kevin? No, we won't. I'm sorry. We're that's, off tomorrow. That's on me. We're, well, I'm off tomorrow. Uh, I'm <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we won't be back tomorrow. We're going to be back on Monday. We'll be back um, on Monday. So keep an eye out. I might make the video tomorrow and then we'll have it ready for, for Monday. So yeah, yeah. All right. we'll be back noon Monday. See you Monday. Have a great weekend, guys. Keep coding. Bye, everybody.